Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very accomplished wordsmith, if I can use that term, from Mumbai, India, Megha Bajaj. Megha, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ashutosh. Yes, very excited to be here today. Thank you so much. Mega is the founder of Wonder of Words, also uh, called WOW, which is WOW. She's the national best-selling author, a passionate educator, and an author and a mentor. So Mega, let me start by asking you to tell me a little bit about your own journey in brief. And what was this fascination for words? Um, so my own journey in brief was such, Ashutosh, that I uh, was a bunker and a scribbler who used to want to bunk school. I found school a bit too structured and a bit suffocating, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to prefer just sitting on my terrace and, you know, it overlooked the sea and I used to want to just scribble and write. So I never thought much about the scribbles. It was more to relieve a young girl with an overactive mind and imagination. Mm -hmm. So I would just write everything that I could, but... I didn't realize that over time, that very act of, you know, love and uh, relaxation, I think writing relaxed me so much mm -hmm. that I think somewhere I found a way to make it into my profession and the rest, as they always say, is history. So, yeah, history. you know, five books later, I can say that writing is one of the most cathartic and one of the most healing processes. And you, you know, you mentioned you have authored nine books. So I'm sure you know that with all those thoughts and feelings going on within, you want to give them some kind of an outlet. And I think writing ends up becoming that for a lot of us. You're so right. And, you know, I often uh, tell young people like you that, I, you know, when, when I hear you talking and how you pursued your passion, I sometimes feel jealous and say that I wish in 1972, when I finished my school, my parents had allowed me to pursue my passion, which was literature and English language. But in those days, it was doctor, lawyer, engineer, you know, so. Ashutosh, even in my time, I mean, <laughs> though it was several generations later, it was just doctor, engineer, lawyer. Oh, so yeah. I have to fight my way through yeah. as well, but absolutely. I'm glad I did. And I'm glad you did, absolutely. <laughs> so, Mega, let's now talk about wonders of words. Wow. Tell me about the inspiration behind founder, founding a wonder of words and what do you do at WAW? Uh, so there are several verticals at WOW, but the way it all began, Ashtosh, is that uh, I used to write a lot and, you know, and because I think I wrote with so much authenticity and a lot of love and a lot of feelings, mm -hmm. I think it used to connect to people and I won this award uh, for several magazines where I was the most read writer. Because this happened, a lot of other people started asking me that, can you teach us writing? And writing used to feel like breathing to me. So I didn't know how to teach someone else breathing. You know, I thought it's just something you have it or you don't, you know. But because there was so much like of, you know, curiosity or uh, wanting uh, to have this expression ground, I felt I should do something. So like in everything in my life, it was pretty accidental. So I just wrote on Facebook one fine day about 10, 11 years ago that, hey guys, planning on starting an online writing workshop. If you're interested, please mail me. And mm -hmm. I honestly forgot all about it. And I came home and there were 36 emails from across the globe where mm -hmm. people wanted to, you know, join. They were like, teach us, tell us how to do this. And I realized that if there's such a thirst in people to express better, I should find a way to channel it. And that's how WOW Online Writing and Healing Workshop was born. Mm -hmm. You know, and what it's led to, I mean, I thought it would begin as just writing, but it's led to so much of personal and spiritual insights and, you know, breakthroughs for people that that kind of took off. And the, uh, you know, the other wow, I mean, wow online and the other vertical kind of off spun from this. So I had a principal who was uh, doing wow. And she said, you know, I'm benefiting so much. Can you not help me take this to my 4,500 children? Mm -hmm. So that's how I thought that, yeah, why are we limiting it to only adults? Let's do something with children. And that's how, wow, three L's, my curriculum came about. And the three L stands for language, life and leadership skills. The idea of this program, Ashutosh, is that, you know, we study math, 
but we don't really understand money all our life like you know when even when we're growing up and you'd know after so many years we're studying science but we don't know the chemistry of relationships mm. you know we're going on studying history but how do i become the next gandhi is, is not taught to us so what i thought is that we need one subject which would be talking where you become the subject mm. and the child learns about themselves so that is what wow reels grew into and today we've touched close to 1.5 lakh lives and you know every year we're reaching out to big number of students mm -hmm. so these are the two main verticals of wow mm -hmm. other than me being an author of course well said this is what i do wow wow yeah. fantastic and you know when i was preparing for my conversation with you i also came across this very interesting term that wow helps individuals become their best version yes help me understand on how do you define best version and what do you do yes so i think what i do is i think all the answers that we all seek lie within us you know but sometimes because we're holding it so close we're not objective so i think the moment you have someone who can look at you with a birds eye view you start getting so much clarity about yourself mm. so what i do through wow be it the curriculum for children or the program i run online for you know all entrepreneurs heads corporate guys everyone i think what i do is i give them that perspective to themselves you know where they learn to look at themselves and study themselves mm -hmm. so rather than being on a treadmill where you're running 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 and you just don't reach anywhere mm -hmm. you start observing and introspecting that hey, is this what i really want to do you know and like you shared your personal story that you would have loved to pursue english literature i think every day there are millions of people who are waking up and doing something which they just don't want to do yeah. so i think what wow helps them to do is stop pause write introspect look at themselves look at what their fears are look at what their strengths are and actually go down the path that's going to help them become their best version fascinating so, fascinating yeah thank you for everything that you are doing and mega you know you also mentioned in what you sent to me was that you grew up in a large joint family how did this large joint family influence your work uh, with wow um i think in a very significant way though obviously you can only connect the dots going backwards you know so i think what i realized is ashutosh um the i think for us the definition of love growing up in a joint family was jo tera hai wo mera hai you know like there was no sense of this is mine i didn't have a cupboard i didn't have you know my own room everything was shared mm -hmm. you know and although we stayed in a pensy road in a very beautiful massive house with a lot of affluence so to speak but still i think our parents and the whole family brought us up in a way that it's yours it's theirs you mm -hmm. know so there's no such thing i think that breeded in me a sense of oneness for people mm. that's helped me so much like i said that the reason i'm able to give people that perspective is because i feel they are mine you know i feel oh i have also gone through this mm. or i can empathize to the level where i can feel oh so this is what she's going through this is what she needs mm. so i think that love that blossomed you know was uh, really a thing of you know joint family and another funny thing but yeah is that i grew up with more mothers than i could imagine you know like in a marwadi joint yeah. setup it's like you have a buddy mummy you have a choti mummy you have some other mummy dadi who's a mummy you know so and of course your own mummy so so you grow up with so many people wanting to mother you wanting to take care of you wanting to love you that i think that naturally came to me that i should go and give that to many more people you know so awesome. i think that's been Amazing. the biggest impact amazing thank you and mega how does wow's curriculum integrate with the traditional educational systems because now you are working with a lot of young kids as well so the way it goes is that i mean like i said in a day uh, so it was a very beautiful feeling you know i was seeing the timetable of one child mm. and uh, it says math science english p arts wow period mm. you know and that's how the timetable looks so basically everywhere you're studying something that's either a right and wrong like you know either it's about uh, there will be exams 
and there will be marks it will be graded whereas wow is just for fun so one of the best things i think that has happened to all the wow schools is unanimously ashutosh it's one of their favorite subjects because mm. art i may like art i may not like art i may like pe i may not like pe but we all love life you know we all want to know a little more about ourselves relationships so it's just become like a favorite subject for many and i think the most beautiful integration that i'm seeing happening is that the more and more children are understanding themselves through wow uh, the homogeneity in a classroom itself like that's what teachers report to us has changed so much like bullying has come down because we have sessions where every child has to come in the front and say what they are scared of mm. every child has to come in the front and say what you know things so a small anecdote that comes to my mind is that there was one child who everyone was scared of okay and in wow he had to come and talk of what is he scared of mm. and they all looking at him and this young boy gets up and he said actually and he had peers for some reason just sharing this and he said actually i am scared that if i don't bully i'll be bullied mm. so that's why i'm so rude to you all and somehow the teacher told me that that day was a turning point in that classroom in the way you know things happen so i think i'm teaching children to know themselves love themselves love other subjects if you know yourself and you love yourself you're bound to do well in life so i think that's the way we've kind of integrated wow into you know amazing. mainstream schools <clears throat> amazing you know from what you just told me you are actually building a huge amount of security yes within each child and that security will serve them really well in their life ahead amazing. absolutely amazing thank you for this example my next question for you megha is what role does meditation and spiritual and your own spiritual journey play in your work with wow um again a very significant one you mm. know ashutosh most people keep spirituality for something towards the end of their life right. where they feel once we are done with everything i will go get into spirituality in fact in the tradition also it said that you know brahmachari then grihastha ashram and then you go Our for brahm yes. you know mm. uh, so but my thing is that's literally putting you know the horse behind the cart mm. because spirituality is what's going to make my brahmachari so much more meaningful spirituality is what's going to make my grihastha ashram so much more meaningful Correct. so i don't know how to remove that out of anything hmm. um, i began meditating when i was all of 23 and it's close to two decades that i have been meditating without ever missing i think it's literally like you know right now ashutosh if i was to tell you that um you know you could have an appointment with narendra modi would that excite you i'm not sure but maybe who who yeah. would it like oh, interviewing who would excite you well i guess interviewing people who would be able to relate with me right uh, and be able to, who i can have a conversation with right that is Be what i would probably be excited about beautiful so so you know the reason i said that like for most people the moment you say like if you could get say some time with narendra modi or if you could get some time with dambani so if you could get some time with your favorite sportsman mm -hmm. how exciting would it be mm -hmm. and then you multiply that excitement by saying if you got an appointment with god how would it be so to me meditation is literally my appointment with god and i'm not willing to compromise on that for anything else in my life i'm a young mom where i have a eight month baby and it does sometimes get a lot you know but i keep it in mind that in fact this meditation is going to help me go and be a better mom hmm. so i may as well take that time out and right. meditate so right. to me meditation is literally my appointment with god and spirituality hmm. is something that helps me with everything in life so i would never wait for a certain day or you know blessing to start i think spirituality is just about living your most authentic and beautiful self every minute That's so it. i want to do that every time every yeah, moment and med meditation is so important i mean it nothing else it just helps to calm one's mind exactly and that is so important thank you so let's now move to your books uh, mega you know you are a national best selling author tell me a little bit about your books and some of the genres that you work on uh the most important genre for me is self help ashutosh because i feel that you know i think everything just connects for me into this whole thing of wanting to 
have a lot of experiences in life uh, keep bettering them and helping others better along the way you know so everything comes from that space for me and i think um, i wrote my first book when i was 23 years old it's called thank you cancer so a very strange name like i remember when i sent it to the publisher they're like why are you thanking cancer you know but but that's been a lot of like my personal journey you know with my mom and a lot of things so mm. i i've written a lot of books and i think each one has been a expression of what i was going through in that particular time uh, which has been the reason that it's connected to people, you know. Otherwise, when you just get up and you want to write on something that doesn't even, you know, is not true for yourself, I don't think it really connects to people. So, uh, literally, I think every book has been my personal diary just put out there into the world. But, you know, as an author, I'm going to ask you a question that how do you approach writing about such deeply personal and emotional topics? Um. It's it's scary, mm -hmm. to be very honest. Like, mm -hmm. say, Thank You Cancer was written when my mom was diagnosed with advanced cancer. And, you know, it's it's scary, right, to be able to look at your emotions, face it. And, like, even now, I'm a little emotional, you know, mm -hmm. even if when I talk of it. Or, obviously, like, you know, for me, that time when I was 23, I'm seeing my mom go through something and I'm coming and I'm writing about it and whatever. I think you... I think very early something very beautiful happened to me, Ashtosh. I realized that my purpose is to go through experiences, share my experiences, which is why I've been given this gift of writing and see how it can probably change someone. So when you come from that space of wanting to make a difference, I think you become the instrument rather than being too full of yourself. So, you know, sometimes I've written a lot of very vulnerable stuff and I've had some very random comments which were very insensitive you know not even trying to be nasty but just insensitive you know so like one book I wrote on cancer about my mom's whole experience and how me and my sister were very involved and there's this lady who reads it and she like calls she knew me personally and she's like how come you've not mentioned your dad at all you know was he not there what is this I don't agree with this experience now I will only write from the experience I have and I can't write from her experience or to please her. So there's always this vulnerability that you have to deal with to get out there. But if you know that's your purpose, then why would you delay it? And I think what's given me a lot of peace is that whatever you do, someone will judge it. Absolutely. You know, so you may as well do what you love to do. And then it's being judged. So at least the 10,000 people who love it and that few odd who don't, but at least you're happy. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So I and think you, that's why I'm so you're very, to... very right. I've often said this and spoken about this, Mega, in many conferences. And I said, I have a lot of respect for authors because they have the courage to put their thoughts out in the public and be open to criticism. Yes. You know, a lot of people don't want to do that. But Absolutely. thank you. You're doing some amazing stuff there. My next question for you is, uh, how do you balance factual storytelling with the emotional narrative in your books? Um, I think I find that quite easy because I'm naturally an emotional person. Okay. So, uh, like a cup of tea is not just a cup of tea for me. It's an experience. So then when I write of it, it ends up being an experience for someone. Like I remember I wrote this one article called Chai Chaiye. Okay, it was something in some monsoon, something and some thousand people mailed or message saying, the minute we finished reading that article, we had a cup of tea. Amazing. And I was like, wow, I mean, that's something, right? Like, it's one thing to say, I like what you wrote. I, but mm. to know that it created exactly what I wanted to create in them. I think that just comes from a space of me being very deeply involved in life, in the present continuous. And, and I think I bring that to my writing, which is why people connect to that emotions. Amazing. And, you know, many authors have multiple thoughts in their minds and they keep making notes as and when for a future book. What is the process you go through before you start a new book? Uh, so because I get a lot of thoughts, Ashutosh, like, mm -hmm. you know, and I love people. So I interact a lot with people. Like right now, when I just heard you and what you do, I actually feel like, shouldn't there be a book on all the people who 
are only wanting to give back and have lived such a full life and mm. you know now want to give back and we could just do something so now thoughts keep coming yeah. as i go about my day mm. but the truth is there's a big gap between thought and execution so okay. earlier i used to actually get very excited about every thought now i think with age i've matured a little and i feel like i'll i wait for the thought to really um, find its ground mm. you know burst into that sapling Hmm. become a lot bigger and meaningful hmm. and then i feel okay when i feel that no this one is really worth keeping is the time i get into a book so i'm not like um to give you an analogy i'm like the amir khan of bollywood where i'll release like one book in 2 3 years i won't keep releasing da, 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 but when i release it it'll be you know of a lot of depth and meaning for me and to the world mm. so that's how i am great response like i have time for two more questions my next question is over the years what would you say is the evolution of your own writing style how has it developed over different books um i think it's developed in a way ashtosh that um i think the first one actually read like a personal diary you mm -hmm. know i was very so emotionally involved and i think i would have cried in all the you know places where i'm writing about you know something emotional so i think i was extremely you know close to the writing mm -hmm. i think with age with some maturity i do see that there's a distance come between my you know what i'm writing and i think when i'm writing it's still the same but when i look at it later objectively mm. i'm able to edit i'm able to touch things i'm able to change things which initially i used to actually get offended when any editor even touch like one word in my writing and i was like no 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 this is come straight from my heart don't touch it whereas now i think i've developed the objectivity to first really flow as a writer and then look at it from above as an editor and see look this is going to go out there to the world where are the tweaks needed so i think i've become more objective with my writing than you know without losing that emotional connect well said and my last question to you uh and this for the many 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 people who will listen to our conversation what advice would you give to aspiring authors who want to write impactful and meaningful books uh i think the advice i would give to every author and to every human out there is that uh you have to be unapologetically yourself mm -hmm. it's it's a very tough thing to be because like we discussed it makes you vulnerable to criticism it makes you feel very unguarded and very like you know like there are days where something happens i'm like oh can i just go into my shell and stay there you know for some days but i really think there was a story that i heard long back that there was this plastic rose and a real rose and you know obviously the plastic rose kept telling the real rose that look you know you're going to die what's the point why are you you know so excited about everything and you know everything like the plastic rose keeps saying but you know you're going to die why did you choose this why did you do this why did you choose to become a real rose you should have been a plastic rose like me and you know just then a breeze comes and from the real rose the fragrance goes to the plastic rose mm -hmm. and it just settles down and it's like oh i understand mm -hmm. you know so i think i don't want to live my life being a plastic rose and i know that it comes with a lot of vulnerabilities but with the fragrance when that breeze flows i think it's worth it so i just wish that all of us you know who write especially really believe in being unapologetically ourselves because that's what's going to go and find that connect to someone else in the world you know mm -hmm. not these you know jargons and trying to you know be very intellectual or like whatever i think anything that comes from the heart goes to the heart so that's my advice to fascinating what amazing advice and on that note mega i just want to say thank you so much for speaking to me about your journey thank you for speaking to me about all the great work you're doing with wonder of words or wow i mean i think you are reaching out to children you're reaching out to corporate leaders you're leasing reaching out to homemakers and doing so much work helping them to start expressing themselves and become better people thank you also for speaking to me about your books what are your thought processes when you write how you make yourself vulnerable i loved your amir khan example of how you give pura a book 
uh, every one or two years when you are convinced that the book is ready to be released. And thank you for also talking to me about that amazing example of the plastic rose versus the real rose and how the difference is that little bit of perfume that a real rose uh, is able to deliver to people, even though for a short time. Thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you so much, Ash. Thank you for having me. It was just lovely being here. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.